regarding the Libya situation today, uh, important events. Uh, what was announced was that the surveillance equipment of the Gaddafi period, uh, the Jamahidiya, uh, prior to the February 17th re uh, revolution has been redeployed to be used today. And the man who's in charge of this internal security was a trainer for the U.S. Army in the United States for some years. This is quite interesting because of the two primary generals that started at the beginning, Yunus, and I forget the other guy's name, uh, but he was based out of Langley, Virginia for 20 years. Um, so uh, that's an important fact. Uh, the second important fact is that we have seen, without exception, every U.S. intervention, massive destruction to the archaeological and historical heritages of the country. Uh, Baghdad was the center of the uh, Muslim Empire for centuries um, and it contained because of its proximity to other uh, flowering uh, centers of Islamic uh, writing uh, and science and so forth because it, uh, for many hundreds of years they did lead the world technologically in many areas along with China then of course we took over and, and much of this uh, towards the 1500s say and uh, uh, so at any rate, what we've seen is in Iraq, uh, the most precious set of manuscripts in uh, Iraq was allowed to burn with U.S. personnel around who were guarding things like the oil ministry. Um, now, we armed the Afghans to fight the Russians, and these became Al-Qaeda and the Taliban, people that we came over and said, God is on your side. That's what Brzezinski said to them, and then handed them Stinger missiles. Uh, so uh, then we go on to Iraq, I indicated that. Uh, in Libya, the uh, most valuable treasure possibly in the world was looted from Benghazi. It was a room full of gold coins from the period of Alexander the Great, because at that time, uh, that area uh, of, uh, of Libya um, uh, was uh, occupied by Alexander the Great. Okay, and that was called at that time... We have um, Tripolitania, Cyrenaica, right, sorry. Um, then uh, we now see that the arming of the Islamic uh, uh, fighters in Libya to overthrow Gaddafi uh, and do it in a, a very aggressive fashion, uh, definitely breaking plenty of teapots on the way to installing their new uh, pro-Western uh, government, uh, pro-Western capitalist uh, uh, elections with some asterisks at the end because uh, many people are not allowed to vote on suspicion of their political ideologies. Uh, we don't, uh, and the candidates are have to be approved. Um, so uh, this all made it possible for enormous amounts of very heavy weaponry for uh, the Islamists, the Salafists, uh, that are violent extremists in Africa. Algeria went through a horrific battle with them for a decade where these uh, Islamists to wreak havoc would go in and uh, massacre babies. And uh, this is uh, something that I was read about with the West is somewhat disinterested because uh, <clears throat> there was really no motivation for us to put the crimes on the rebels because we had no love lost for the Algerian socialist government either, as far as I understand it. Uh, so this flooding of arms into Mali led to the desecration of the greatest set of historical buildings uh, that's in sub-Saharan West Africa that I know of, which is uh, Timbuktu, uh, which, uh, because it was in the desert, it's a mud-constructed, amazing city that I've always wished to travel to, and now when I travel to it, it will be destroyed, uh, much of its historical, its mosque, uh, many of the shrines, um, and this is directly attributable to our ham-fisted way of going about our business in the world of destabilizing these countries rather than developing transitions through peaceful negotiation. So, but there has been an interesting uh, turning point for me personally to grapple with the uh, problem of the 
what's called the peace of the graveyard. The peace of the graveyard is the argument that you shouldn't revolt and riot. Uh, because to do so would have tremendous suffering and bloodshed for years and chaos. Um, but in actual fact, uh, it is uh, a noble human aspiration to reject the peace of the gar graveyard and to man the barricades and not to be larded with social services from a police state. So I've done my best to stop the slaughter of the Gaddafi family unrightfully and the torture of their followers and I have tried my best to explain what was achieved in Libya uh, socially in terms of medicine and lifespan and education exceeding the US in some of these metrics absolutely sterling in the Arab and African world and rivaling South America I've done my best to explain all that but uh, I was, you know, talking to my father, who's a professor of history, and he explained this concept of the peace of the graveyard. It's an interesting concept because we see the same problem in Syria, uh, where 75% of the population uh, is Sunni, and uh, is probably many of them do want to overturn Assad. And what we looked at in the past was to say, but look at all the human suffering. Uh, how is it possible that people could support this madness? Um, but the fact of the matter uh, is that uh, that assumption of a stable, peaceful middle class that doesn't want change, it's really hard to say um, when you use it, frame it in terms of this argument of the peace of the graveyard. And so tomorrow there will be elections in Libya where the uh, supporters of a regime that had a very good uh, management for a regime of its kind uh, uh, because of the fact that you had free bread, free gas, free housing, free higher education and everybody complains about shortages and corruption and all that uh, within that context but uh, now we have uh, so we have these elections and uh, you know I, I reflected on this issue about what to do tomorrow in terms of uh, the movement to hold invasion capitalism at bay and uh, fascism uh, creeping into our system at bay uh, with the Patriot Act and the corporate control of governments through spending in elections and control of uh, the media which is concentrating in power in a banking system that's making money on the backs of the workers and the small businesses hand over fist by manipulating all sorts of things that allow them to make ten times as much as we could unless we became banks we could all become banks and loan money out at uh, a dollar of money loan for every 10 cents of the money deposited. So um, we have the election tomorrow in Libya. And I've also been in touch with somebody in the uh, one of the businesses that's trying to uh, deal with the new Libya in the media. And um, he did not answer my hard questions about the suppression of the loyalists. Uh, he didn't, but uh, he did say, come over to Libya, it's nothing like. What it, how it's portrayed um, and uh, being in touch with him whether he's right or wrong whether he's a good person or a bad person uh, made me think that on the one hand you can't forgive or forget what happened on the other hand that you hope that tomorrow is the first day towards enfranchising and restoring all the money that was stolen all the lives that were lost uh, and and uh, try to hope the people peace and justice and prosperity without forgiving or forgetting what our countries did to uh, destabilize a small peaceful police state with high social services instead of talking to them to arrange a transition. My name is Alexander Hagen. Good night and good luck.